college. Hey, I want you to turn with me to Daniel chapter number 11. Daniel chapter number 11, verse 32. As you're turning there or you're scrolling on your smart device to find it, if you're able, one more time, can we stand for the reading of God's word to show honor to his word if you're able to do so? Daniel chapter number 11, verse 32. We're going to read the second part of that verse. God dropped this in my spirit a couple of weeks ago, and I have to release this verse to you. As you know, we have been decreeing by the Spirit of the Lord that 2020 is a banner year for Destiny Point Church, for you, for your family, for your marriage, for everything that pertaineth unto you. This is our banner year. Everybody I say banner year and I believe with all my heart that God wanted the scripture to be preached and to be released over you and may the spirit of the Lord speak to your heart and stir your faith today the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the second part of that scripture but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits can we read it together but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits I want to preach to you today part number four a banner year father we ask you that you would speak a word to our heart we pray God that your spirit would touch us strengthen us that we would be propelled to a whole nother level and dimension in you stir up the gift within us and let us have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say in Jesus mighty name amen amen look at your neighbor before you're seated and say we're about to have some church <laughs> But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. 2020 is a year of great significance. It shall be a year of great significance. The time that we are in is very important, very strategic by the Lord the time for the body of Christ globally is a very vital time the time the era the season that we are living in right now is very significant is very spiritual it's very vital there's a lot of things that will weigh in the balance in this season in this time will we proceed and go forward and take territory or will we shrink back and march around the same mountain that we've marched around for many years there was a people in Israel that had a heart to go forward and to the things that God had for them and then there was a group of people that continued to march around the same mountain until they died off. They choose to live in the wilderness rather than live in the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. Because there were giants in the land and there were kingdoms and they didn't want to interact and embrace and bring them down and obey the things of the Lord. I believe for the body of Christ that we are in a vital time, amen? amen. That we are in a supernatural, spiritual time that we must move forward. God is setting the stage for a great revival, an outpouring like man has never seen before god is setting the stage he is putting the pieces together
This pastor, we are putting things together and getting ready. And God spoke to our heart. He said, just like the days of Moses when I gave him instruction for the tabernacle and all of the pieces of furniture in the tabernacle to, to have it in their place. The Bible says that when Moses had everything in its place, then all of a sudden the glory of God filled the house. And the glory was so strong that the people couldn't even enter in to the tabernacle we are in a season of prepping and putting things into place and God is setting a stage for a great glory to be released in this house and in this city and in this nation and in the body of Christ I truly believe it we've got to have wisdom and have discernment and be like the tribe of Issachar who were discerning of the times that they were in we got to understand that the time we are in is very vital. And 2020 is a very, and going to be, a very significant time, an era, and season for the body of Christ. As you know, I've shared this with you, but I, you got to hear this as, as we lay some foundation that in the Hebrew and Jewish culture and calendar, that in September, that they entered in by their calendar into a whole nother year and a whole nother decade. Their calendar looks different than our calendar. And as believers, we look to and we keep our eye on the Hebrew people or the Jewish nation of Israel to see because they are God's chosen people and there are spiritually significant things that take place in their, their people and within their nation that's connected to the believer of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They entered into the year of 5780. 5780 is the year the, the the number 80 in the Hebrew calendar and number system is the the, the word pay. Everybody say pay. It is a symbol or a, 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 a word that defines the number 80 as the, 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 the symbol of a mouth. Because you got to understand that numbers and letters in uh, the Hebrew culture is very important and signif uh, significant. Every number has words and definitions attached to it. And they entered into, in September, uh, uh, the year of 5780 on their calendar, the year of pay, the year of the mouth, the year of declaration, the year of confession. We understand it's a vital and significant time. We understand in our word that the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so your declaration in this season especially is very vital that you decree the word of God over your life. That's why you got to come to discipleship nights to know the word so that you can decree the word of God over your life because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Listen, if you're not careful, you can walk around and say, I'm depressed and I'm discouraged and, and I don't know if I'm going to make it another minute and you shall have what you speak. But God's raising up a people in this time that says, you know what? I might be going through some stuff, but the word says I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath and Christ is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. It's significant what comes out of our mouth and what we decree over our lives. Look at your neighbor and say, watch your declaration. We understand in our calendar that we moved into 2020. And if you haven't realized that yet, happy new year. <laughs> happy new decade. 2020 is upon us and we are in it <laughs> and the first month is almost already gone in 2020 we understand 2020 that numbers I don't have time to break all this down I talked about it a couple weeks ago that God is a God of systems and God is a God of patterns and God is a God of rhythms and God is a God of numbers and God is a God of seasons he moves and flows and you can find and see patterns and rhythms in God in the New Testament the angel was sent by God to stir the waters in the pool of Bethesda at a certain season God is a God of patterns and cycles and seasons Seasons and numbers are very vital and important to God, very significant. 
We understand 2020 represents vision, doesn't it? How many has got 2020 vision in here? How many need, needs the Lord to touch their eyes like I do? I'm blind Bartimaeus without my glasses. 2020 is a year of vision. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. We understand that we are connected to the year of the mouth and declaration, but we are also connected to the year of vision. It's very important what we see and what we decree in this era and in this season. Amen? We've entered into, as the Lord spoke to our hearts for you and for our church and your family and your marriage and everything that pertaineth unto you. God spoke and said for DPC and anyone by faith that would reach it, we've been decreeing that this is our banner year. God spoke and said DPC will experience a banner year in 2020. I wish I could preach it like I feel it and like I know it when I say that this is going to be a banner year for us. If I could express in words how I know he spoke it in my heart, I uh, intend to do my very best. But you understand that a banner year definition means this. It is a time that is marked by exceptional production, significance, victory, increase, and success. We are in the year of pay, a year of declaration. We are in the year of vision. And because of those things, I believe that this is going to be a banner year, a year that is marked by exceptional production, significance, victory, and all these things. This is going to be a year that God takes us to a whole nother level in our church and in our ministries and our anointing upon your life, in your marriage, in your business and your vocation and all these things. Listen, this is not a year that God just wants to give you stuff and material things. I'm not talking about that. Though he may bless you with some desires of your heart because he's a good God. But I'm talking about a banner year where this is a year of kingdom significance and your calling and your purpose and the kingdom mandate that is upon you that this is going to be a year of exceptional production for the kingdom of of God and you and your calling upon your life. Can I hear a good amen out there? Amen. Exceptional production. Everybody say exceptional production. exceptional production. Ephesians 3 and 20 says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I ask or even imagine because God is a God of exceptional production, isn't he? The Bible says that one can chase a thousand but two can chase ten thousand. It doesn't matter makes sense. You would think one can chase a thousand off, so two would chase off two thousand. But there is a spiritual synergy that is released. One chases a thousand, but when there's two and there's agreement, it chases ten thousand. Because God is a God of exceptional production. He does exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. There was a woman that had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil that was going to make one last cake in a time of famine in the book of Kings and the Bible says God instructed her to give it to the prophet and then watch what would happen. She obeyed and she gave the last meal in oil and made a cake and gave it to the prophet and the Bible says her meal and her oil never ran out. Every time she dipped in it to make another cake and bake something else it was supernaturally filled up again. You know why? Because God is a God of exception production exceeding and abundantly above all we can ask and think. I come to decree to you that this is your year of exceptional production. That God is going to put his hand on your hand and you're going to see things manifest supernaturally. This is a year of increase. Four folks said, Amen. Amen. 
I said, this is a year of increase. A year that God touches everything that pertaineth unto your hand. And things begin to prosper. The Bible says in Luke 6, it says, when you give, it shall be given unto you. But then it says, it shall be what? Pressed down, shaken together, and then running over. Psalm 1 and 3 says, you will be like a, a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will bring forth fruit in your season. Your leaf will never wither. And whatsoever you do shall what? It shall prosper. Because God is a God of exceptional production and then also he's a God of increase. It is his desire for your life to increase. It's his desire that every area of your life increases. Listen, your mindset and your wisdom and your knowledge and your spirit and your anointing and your ministry, everything is his intention for everything to increase. Listen, you might say, I'm living in a famine. It's been tough. It's been heart but the Bible says in Genesis 26 and 12 that Isaac sowed even in a time of famine and God still brought to him a hundredfold return in the time of famine because when God speaks increase over you it doesn't matter if everybody else around you is in famine if God touches the stuff on your life you can have increase in a time of famine can I hear an amen, amen. This is a year of success. Everybody say success. Yes. Joshua 1 and 8, he said, I will make your way prosperous. He said, if you meditate on the law, if you keep it by you, don't let the word depart out of your mouth, Joshua. He said, then shall your way be prosperous and you will have good what? Success. You know, a banner year by definition means exceptional production, increase, and success. This is our year of success. This is a year of breakthrough. This is a year of victory for your life. This is a year where people are going to break some barriers, some things that the enemy has tried to put over you and around you to keep you in and to keep you out. But this is a year of good success that you're going to see breakthrough in your life. I feel this in my heart to tell somebody that this is the year that you are going to finally have success over your enemy. You're going to see Goliath fall down. You're going to see Jezebel's cast out. You're going to see Pharaoh's swallowed up in waters. You're going to see Jericho walls coming down. Liars are going to be exposed. Haters are going to run from you. Why? Because you are going to move into a time of success and breakthrough and put the devil on the run that's tried to come wreak havoc in your life. You're about to wreak havoc on the enemy's life. Come on, somebody. Somebody probably said, what kind of church did I just walk up into? This is a year of significance. Can I hear an amen? amen. It is a year of exceptional production. A year of increase. A year of success. And a year of significance. The word significance means something of great importance. Something of great significance substance, something that has great meaning and weight to it, something that is very significant, is very important, very uh, 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 strong, something of great weight and authority. Listen, significance, the Bible says in Esther 4 and 14 that the man of God said unto Esther, after all the stuff that was going on in the land and how the enemy wanted to take out the Jewish nation and he recognized that there was favor upon Esther and he knew that he she could finally and or possibly find favor with the king and he said you know what maybe you have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this and Esther began to realize that God had positioned her for a time of great significance she knew that her 
existence was not by accident. She knew that she was placed in time, in space, and location because God had a work for her to do to save a nation. I come to tell somebody that this year you're going to realize like never before that you are of great significance to the kingdom of God and the work of God. That you are not here by accident. You are not breathing by happenstance and just coincidence. No, you have been divinely planned. You have been divinely placed. You have been divinely purposed by God himself for such a time as this. Why? Why? Because through you, he wants to bring exceptional production, success, victory, and significance to the kingdom of God through your life. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? So this is our banner year, amen? This is my year that I go deeper in the things of God. My year that I know God like I've never known him and hear him like I've never heard him and see him like I've never seen him and, and experience him like I've never experienced him. Daniel 11 verse 32, you're ready for our scripture. But the people that know their God shall be what? strong and do what exploits in a banner year that God is prepping for you see I, I gotta back up for a minute because I feel this in my spirit that there's might be some folks sitting here and say man this I, I I don't connect with that because I've got so much going on or you don't have the faith to believe it listen you got to hear the word of God God has plans for you not to harm you but to prosper you according to Jeremiah 29 and 11 I don't care what the devil said I don't care what you've been through I don't care if you feel it or not God has great plans for somebody in 2020 and he said the people that know him shall be strong and do exploits in Daniel chapter number 11 verse 32 in this passage in this scripture and in this prophetic unction by Daniel scholars and commentators they believe and they have written and they say that this scripture, this passage, this prophecy would be referencing a future event and would be connected to a particular Jewish family that was tied to the house of Judah in the year of 167 B.C., known as the Maccabees. You gotta know some history of this era. This prophecy was connected to this family in 167 BC, the family, the Maccabees. And Maccabee in Hebrew literally means the hammer. Everybody say the hammer. You gotta understand that Daniel's prophecy that there would be a people that would know their God and they would be strong and do exploits, was connected to this era and this time and the events that would unfold. For in this period of 167 BC, this family, this one particular family, they revolted against the nation of Syria and they gained freedom for the whole nation of Israel for the first time since the Babylonian captivity that brought in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in their era. For the first time in many years and seasons that they gained freedom through their revolt, this family, the Maccabees, the Hammer, they rebelled against captivity. They rebelled against status quo. They rebelled against sinfulness and wickedness and the culture of wickedness. And they were under a wicked ruler and a people and they revolted and rebelled against them. And in history, they are noted and it's noted that this family that they had great courage to revolt and to act out and to go against the grain and to eventually bring freedom to the whole nation I want you to understand I want to set this up for a minute God spoke to Daniel 
through a prophecy and said, the people that know their God shall be strong and do what? do exploits it was connected to this era in this time but we also understand as believers in Christ that Old Testament stories and scriptures and types and shadows are connected to you and I that there is spiritual parallel for the believer today amen the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits there was a spiritual parallel that's taking place right now in the era of Daniel in the season and time and family of the Maccabees. I want you to understand that today, spiritually speaking, we literally live in a modern day Babylon. We live in a Babylonian culture that is wicked and has idols and worships false gods and, and will command you to bow down to their false gods like they did Daniel. You will be thrown if you pray in a lion's den or Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. If you don't bow to this false god, we will throw you into a fiery furnace. We live in an era and a day that the enemy is putting on the pressure and says if you don't bow down to my ways we will persecute you and we will come after you and we live in a day of 1 Timothy in 3 where it says that in the last days that there would be perilous times. We live in perilous times where he said that even those who uh, that, that good would seem to be evil and evil would be good and they would be haters of those who do good and they would be uh, folks that were against truth and all these things we live in a modern day Babylon where there is pressure to bow down to these things and there is captivity and there are strongholds but the Bible said in Daniel eleven thirty two, in the midst of all this God said that they there will yet be a people. There will be a people. I want to tell you, number one, that there is going to be a people. God is looking for a people in 2020. God is raising up a people. God is raising up a remnant. The Bible says he is searching for one that will stand in the gap. He's looking for an Ezekiel that will look at some dry bones and speak life to them again. And then the dry bones will live again. God is raising up a people in a Babylonian culture that will know their God. A people that's hungry for him. A people that's thirsty for God. God's raising up a people that's got their hearts set on him. A people passionately pursuing him. Come on somebody. A people that Jesus is their priority and kingdom work and the kingdom commission is their passion. A people tired of religion. Religion, a people tired of the motion, people that's tired of lukewarmness, a people that's tired of Jezebel spirit, a people tired of Satan and all his ways. God is raising up a people that will say yes to him, yes to his will, yes to his ways, yes to his call, yes to his mandate, a people that says yes, we can take the land, yes, we will see revival, yes, we will see our city saved. Listen, God is raising up a church, not to go to church, but a church to be the church in 2020. A people that know their God and will be strong and do exploits for him. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, are you part of the people? Are you part of the people? He said, and Daniel, he said there will be a people that know their God. A people that know their God. What does 2020 stand for? Vision. 2020 stands and significantly speaks of vision and seeing, doesn't it? See, you're not, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. A people that know their God. The word know 
can reference having an understanding, right? Knowledge, I know. We understand in the Old Testament that Adam knew his wife Eve. Uh, Eve. It represents um, intimacy, right? But in Daniel, I studied this out. In Daniel chapter number 11, 32, when he said there will be a people that know their God, the word know, you're not going to believe this. The word know, it's only referenced in this way a couple times, that the word know in the Hebrew literally means one that can see. One that can observe. One that recognizes through sight. One that acknowledges. One that senses. In other words, the people that know their God. In other words, there is a people that God is raising up that can see and recognize and sense and observe that God is up to something something and time is now he said the people that he's raising up will be able to see that now is the time that he is up to something and he's about to release a greater glory and revelation a people that can see him working and moving will be what strong and do exploits i come to ask you can you see him today can you see him? Can you see him moving? Can you see him working? Can you see him setting some things up for you? Even in the midnight hour, even when it's dark all around you, even when hell has come against you and you feel like you lost everything, the Bible says that all things will work out for your good. If you don't quit, eventually there's going to be joy in the morning. Because he's working in the dark times. He's working in the dark times. May we see, can we see our kinsman redeemer dropping little handfuls out for us? Do we recognize that he's moving? Can we be like the prophet's servant who felt surrounded by the enemy and the prophet said, God, open his eyes and let him see. And God opened his eyes and he saw spiritual angelic army surrounding the army and he said, there's now more for us than against us. Can we see God? The people that he's raising up will know him will see him and they will be strong come on somebody they will be strong that word means they will be firm and they will be constant and they will be steadfast and they will be unmovable how many knows the devil wants to distract you and try to move you out of the position with God? He wants to move you out of the right place with God. He wants to, to, to distract you. The enemy wants to try to move you. But those who know their God will be strong. They will be unmovable. They will be steadfast. And the Bible says that they will do exploits. And the, the word exploits exploits means this it means illustrious deeds through battle illustrious deeds through battle illustrious means notable outstanding above and beyond accomplishments and feats that are out of this world and out of this mind that's where Ephesians 3 and 20 comes in because he does exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think I come to tell you that God in a banner year is raised raising up a people that know him see him amen God is raising up a people a remnant on fire sold out people that can prophetically see him and have insight that God is up to something and he's moving and I see him and I'm following him God's raising up a people that will see him they will be unmovable and they will accomplish illustrious deeds exceeding abundantly above all we can ask for or all that we can think in other words you're going to be like 
Samson, when the devil throws a thousand men at you, one after another, you will defeat a thousand all by yourself. That means that there's going to be some giants that are two and three times your weight and your size that God's going to use you to bring down. That walls are going to fall. Your oil is not going to uh, stop flowing. They may throw you in a fiery furnace, but you won't even have the smell of smoke upon your clothing. The enemy will come in one way, but in a banner year, because you're strong and you're doing exploits, the enemy will flee seven ways. Come on, somebody. That means you will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. That means that you will cast out devils. That means that you will prevail against the gates of hell. In a banner year, God's raising up a people that know their God and will be what? Strong and do exploits. Come to tell you that you are stronger than you realize. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells within you. The devil tries to make you think that you should be in fear and torment and be intimidated. But the truth of the matter is this, that when you wake up in the morning and you put your feet on the side of your bed and you touch the floor, the truth is the devil's like, oh man, he got up again. She got up again. What are they going to do today to wreak havoc on my kingdom of darkness? You got to understand the truth. I decree over you today that 2020 is going to be a year and a time that your house prospers and your hand prospers and your marriage prospers and your business prospers and your mind prospers and your spirit prospers and your prayers avail much and your finances prosper and your kids prosper and your enemies shall be brought down I decree over you that 2020 is a year of favor favor that's not fair favor that doesn't make sense favor on your life favor on your kids favor on your vocation favor on that judge with that judge favor with your boss favor in this community favor with your co-workers this is the year that God's people are strong and we do exploits we prosper and we see things come to pass <laughs> Jess you can come to the music I shared with you one time before maybe a couple times in the past that I heard this man tell a story that he had a dream one night and in his dream he opened the door and he entered into this hallway. How many knows a hallway always represents transition from one place to another, a hallway? Have you ever been in the hallway before with God and you're like, when's the next door going to open? <laughs> Don't lose heart in the hallway. I've been in the hallway before. One door, door closed and I'm in the hallway. Where's the next door? This man had a dream and he shared that in his dream he stepped in to this hallway and placed a transition and all of a sudden the hallway became dark. It became cold and it smelled very foul. And in his dream, he could sense all these things. Darkness filled this hallway. And all of a sudden, he says, Satan stepped down into the hallway and just stared him down with intimidation. He said for a moment, he felt in his dream, he felt very intimidated, felt fear and doubt. The enemy stepped into the hallway, brought darkness and fear. He said, but then all of a sudden in the dream, he said there was light that broke forth. And the Spirit of God stepped in between him and the enemy. And he said, but then the next thing that happened, 
he said the Spirit of God started taking steps back like this one step after another stepping back and then all of a sudden the Spirit of God stepped in and when he took a step back the Spirit of the Lord his foot stepped into his foot and then the next step his other foot stepped into this man's foot and then the Spirit of God came within him and dwelled within him and life came within him and then he said he started stepping towards the enemy and the enemy left the hallway listen I want to tell you that God is raising up a people that know him and will be strong and do exploits and will put the devil on the run that will wreak havoc on the kingdom of darkness is there anybody here today that says I'm strong I see him and I'm ready to do illustrious deeds through spiritual battle I want you to stand on your feet